Well, hello everybody out there and welcome to another humdinger of a Printify webinar. My name is Martin. I'm, it's my pleasure to be your host today. And we are going to be giving you all sorts of cool tips and tricks, all with the one goal to make you a more profitable, more knowledgeable seller. And I'm joined for a record third time by the one and only Starla Moore. Starla Moore, how are you doing today? Oh, I am so excited. We are going to have so much fun. And, and I see lots of wolf emojis in the chat. So that has me especially excited. Exactly. And I think uh, Claudia O is the most excited of all your handmade <laughs> alphas because she managed to put the most wolf emojis in the chat. So hats off to you. Uh, but hats off, hats off to all the rest of you. Uh, uh, handmade alphas out there checking in. Wonderful. Good to see Canada so so widely represented. A couple of people from the UK. <laughs> we got Story Paint from California. So always wonderful to see where everyone is joining from. We're going to have ourselves a great, great time today. Okay. All right. But um, we're also going to be giving away some super cool prizes. This will be the one webinar with the biggest prize package ever in the history of print on demand. So thank you so much for joining us. There'll be stuff, even if you're watching on replay, there'll be some stuff for you to take advantage of. But if you're watching live, there's going to be some really, really cool, cool stuff. Now, I hear you asking me, Martin, so you're talking about prizes. What are these prizes going to be? Well, I'm glad you asked because today, on our end at least, we're going to be giving away uh, a prize package. You're going to get one of these super cool, awesome Printify hoodies. Uh, the one, of the exact one that Starla is wearing over there on her end. A uh, personalized Printify webinars mug and fifty dollars of Printify sales credit. Now that'll be for three randomly selected uh, uh, survey uh, survey participants that answer today's trivia question correctly, and that'll be based on today's information. So be sure to. Pay attention, okay? We'll be giving away that, uh, that link to the survey here at the end. Plus, we'll also be giving away, as we do, uh, two coupon codes throughout today's presentation. So I'm going to ask you to get your Printify account out and ready. Click on that little green button on the upper right-hand corner. Scroll down to where it says Payments and scroll down to where it says Coupons because the first person that enters today's coupon code will get an instant $50 of Printify sales credit egg delivered into your Printify account. So get ready for that. But... Starla has a ton of cool stuff she'll be giving away as well. Starla, why don't you tell me about that? All right, let's let's shift directions a little bit. Let me know when when we're sharing on my end. But you know, while the Printify team is getting that figured out, if you guys are new here, my name's Starla Moore. I'm an Etsy coach, a YouTuber, a science fiction author, a public speaker, a coffee enthusiast, and I'm the manager over at eRank.com, which is Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And that information is going to come in handy today because that's what we are going to be talking about. Martin, am I sharing over there? Are we? Are, You're good to are go. We, all right. Since uh, Printify was kind enough to have me on their channel again for my third amazing webinar with all of you, we are going to be doing something that I have never, ever, ever done before. And this is kind of my way of saying thanks. OK, so are you guys ready? This is really exciting. Not only will Printify be giving away some amazing prizes during the webinar, but I'll giving or be giving away for the first time, literally ever, one full ride scholarship to my Etsy coaching program, The Handmade Alpha Academy. And this is the part where everybody in the chat starts like freaking out big time, okay? For those unfamiliar, The Handmade Alpha Academy is a nine module training program that teaches sellers how to build, market, and grow dominant brands on Etsy step-by-step. -step. If there was ever a college course for all things Etsy, The Handmade Alpha Academy is it. Not only will the winner be getting the entire nine module program, you'll also get 12 months of E-Rank Pro, and you will access to our Alpha Holiday Bootcamp, access to the Product Photography Essentials workshop, or sh workshop by photography coach Christina Nicole, and access to our student community of over a thousand active sellers. And you'll get direct support from me forever. So needless to say, you guys are going to want to stick around until the end because we have never done this and we probably won't be doing it in again. This is this is an all new shindig just for you guys. OK, um, Martin, I am good to get into the presentation if if they're ready. Oh, we're ready to go. Let's take it away. All right, guys, hope you have your pens out. So we keep saying it over and over and over again. 
But what the heck even is Etsy SEO and why is it important? For all of our newbies, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And basically, your SEO is how you're going to get your products in front of the people who are most likely to buy them. I like to think of your SEO as a roadmap that your ideal customers can follow in order to find you in the vast sea of other shops that are essentially selling products that are similar to yours. Think about what it's like to shop online. Online. We land on a website like Etsy and we type in a few words in our search bar that are related to what we want to find. And this is how we tell sites like Etsy what we want to buy. The problem is Etsy doesn't know what shoppers want to buy. They rely on us as sellers to put up road signs that basically say, yes, I have that type of item in my store. And we do this by adding the same words that shoppers are typing into the search bar into our own listings. That way, the Etsy algorithm can connect the dots and match us with, with relevant searches. You probably already know these words as keywords, right? And within your Etsy listings, there are several places that you can place your keywords. These include your Etsy title, which will send the strongest signals to Etsy. Your Etsy tags, which also send strong signals to Etsy. And your attributes, which are these little drop-down menus that you can use in order to fill out specific details about your product, like the color, the size, and the style, right? Descriptions are another area that we can place a few keywords, and they do help to some degree. But Etsy recently shared that they do not use descriptions for query matching. In other words, there's no need to stuff a bunch of keywords into your description. Etsy just uses them to get a bit more context about your item to further decide what it is, okay? So for now, we want to keep what I I call the algorithmic totem pole in mind. Titles, tags, attributes, and descriptions in this exact order of importance, okay? So now we know where to put these keywords, but how the heck do we know what keywords to use? And how do we know that shoppers are even interested in what we're selling to begin with? For example's sake, let's say that we're selling this strawberry tote bag in our Etsy shop. Now, I might be tempted to title this product as a purple girly strawberry tote bag for kids, right? That sounds like a good title, right? Right? Well, maybe, but I just made a fatal error. I guessed the keywords for my title, and guessing is not a good strategy for ranking your listings. Though I may think that people are searching for purple girly strawberry tote bag for kids on Etsy, without actually knowing how many people are searching for this term, there's no way to tell if customers are actually looking for this type of item. This is where tools like eRank come in. With the eRank keyword tool, we can get a sense for what's actually in demand, as well as the exact words that shoppers are using to find items similar to what we're selling. That way, we can use those same words in our listings. Remember, we want to make a match. We want Etsy to match the words that we use in our titles and tags with the words that our ideal shoppers are searching for. And when doing our keyword research, we want to start broad and narrow our way down. If you're selling this purple strawberry tote bag, it's better to start our search with the word tote bag because E-Rank will be able to suggest more specific ideas based on this search. It'll also help you to not use up your quota as quickly if you're using the E-Rank free plan, okay? Once you've typed in your broad keyword, we want to spend some time on this page. E-Rank will display several important pieces of information, including the monthly searches, average clicks, click-through rates, and competition for this term. And most likely, all of these things are going to be really, really high since we've typed in such a broad phrase. So don't worry so much about the numbers right away, okay? Take a quick glance around the page to make sure that there's at least some demand for this type of item. Then scroll down the page until you reach the keyword ideas box. This is where we're going to be looking for little golden nuggets, okay? From this list, we want to begin looking for possible keywords to experiment with in our tags and titles. And I highly recommend clicking this button right down here to create a keyword list to save these words in so it's easier to keep track of them. Free members can make one list, 
basic members can, can create 25 lists and pro members can create 50 lists, which is super useful if you want to keep all of your keywords separate for each type of product that you sell. You know, it, it might be easier to have everything in its own little category, right? To save a keyword to your list, create or select a list from this little blue box, then begin clicking the stars next to the keywords that you'd like to add to that list. This will allow you to go back to them later so that you can revisit their monthly search volumes, which is super duper important because at the start of each month, e rank gets all new data. And all new data means that you can see the rise and fall of trends as they're happening. It's very important. You wanna check every month to see if the keywords that you're using in your listings are still popular. Now, while looking for keywords to add to your listings, I recommend working with a combination of low hanging fruits and one or two high hanging fruits. The low hanging fruits are keywords that may not be searched for as much and may not have the best clicks and click through rates, but the competition is lower, which means that we can hopefully rank for these more easily. A few terms that I might consider low hanging fruits are strawberry tote bag and fruit tote bag. So though tote bag on its own is going to be a little too hard to rank for, we may be able to rank for some of these low hanging fruit terms by placing them in our listing titles. Now, next up, we are going to be crafting our Etsy title and we'll be taking a deep dive into the Etsy algorithm. But first, that, that went really fast. Maybe it's just me. Let's go ahead and hand the show back over to Martin and do our first little giveaway. Hey, thank you, Starla. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, I love giving away stuff for free. So why don't we go ahead and do that right now? But but first, just a quick reminder, folks out there, we will be having a live Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. So I see a few of you already putting your questions into the chat. No need to hang on to those until the end and, and put it all in at once. Go ahead and put those in as our questions come up. Our moderator, Chris Dubs, will be collecting those. And Starla and I will be happy to address those at the end of the presentation. But I promised you some money. So let's give away our today's first coupon code. But first, join me for my live Q&A sessions Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, we'll put that link in, into the chat. Sit down with me, talk about anything in this uh, that was presented in this webinar, anything about Printify, in uh, pr print on demand in general, and I'd be happy to sit down with you one-on-one, -on -one, answer your questions. We have a lot of fun, okay? All right, so pull out your Printify accounts, ladies and gentlemen. Click on that little green button on the upper right-hand side. Click, uh, scroll down to where it says payments, and then scroll down to where it says coupons and prepare to enter today's first coupon code. Now, you won't see any bells and whistles saying you're a big winner. You'll either get the 50 bucks or you won't. It'll say this coupon doesn't exist. That means you are too slow. But uh, you'll have another chance to win later today. And if you are the winner, let us know in the chat so we can celebrate. All right, that's enough of that. You want some money, so here it is, today's first coupon coupon code is handmade alpha written just like this handmade alpha that should be that should be pretty easy for you guys to spell all you folks that were putting in the wolf emojis at the beginning of, of today's presentation handmade alpha congratulations to the winner don't feel bad if you didn't win you'll have another chance all right starla it's all yours Woo, let's do it. All right, now we're gonna get to the fun stuff, okay? In order to get our products in front of shoppers, we need to use the right keywords in our listings, right? Keywords that will help Etsy's algorithm to understand what we sell and what type of shoppers should see our products, okay? When it comes to Etsy SEO, there are two sides of the algorithm that we want to appeal to. This is the part that most Etsy gurus don't really talk about, and it's my favorite part, okay? One side of the algorithm is strict and likes to see our keywords exactly as the shopper types them in. This is called exact matching, and it will result in stronger keyword matching. For example, if someone searches for strawberry tote bag on Etsy, we would want to have the phrase strawberry tote bag completely intact in our title and tags to make an exact match. I like to call these keywords our superstar keywords because they're the VIPs of our listings. We want to make sure that our superstar keywords really shine because your superstar keyword is ultimately what you want to be known for. 
Okay. The other side of the algorithm is a little less powerful, but still important for ranking. It's called broad matching. During the process of broad matching, Etsy plays a little fun game of mix and match, where they put words from your tags and titles together, regardless of whether or not those words are next to each other. For example, in the keyword phrase, cute, purple strawberry tote bag, we would still exact match for the, for the term strawberry tote bag because these words are right next to each other. But we would broad match for strawberry bag, cute strawberry, cute bag, cute purple bag, purple tote bag, and so on. So keeping Etsy's broad matching capabilities in mind, it's unnecessary to craft our titles and tags in a way that repeats the same words over and over again. The algorithm is able to mix and match all of your keywords in every possible combination. In fact, have you ever seen an Etsy title that looks like this? Strawberry tote bag, cute tote bag, fruit tote bag, purple tote bag. The term tote bag was repeated four times in this title, which not only takes up a lot of character space, but it also directly goes against what Etsy's best practices tell us to do. Instead, we might craft our title like this, purple strawberry tote bag with cute fruit pattern, because we will exact match for our superstar keyword, strawberry tote bag and we'll broad match for the terms cute tote bag, fruit bag, purple tote bag, strawberry bag, and so on. Now that we've started our title with the most important aspect of our product, we still have plenty of additional keywords to experiment with. Now, ideally, you'll want to find more terms closely related to your products that you could broad match for. For example, the term floral tote bag is a great low-hanging fruit with a medium level of competition. So we could add floral to our title to make the phrase purple floral strawberry tote bag with cute fruit pattern. But after a while, you may find yourself struggling to find terms related to your item. After all, there's only so many ways to describe a tote bag, right? <laughs> this is where I recommend tossing in a closing keyword related to the target customer. These keywords typically won't bring in a lot of traffic, but they're good to experiment with after you've already catered your title to the item itself. Now, we have plenty of space left, so let's finish off the title with a potential recipient for shoppers who are looking for gifts. From our list of suggested keywords associated with tote bag, we're going to skim this list and begin noting some of the terms related to possible recipients, occasions, and target customers. So from our list, I was able to find the keywords bridesmaid tote bags, bachelorette tote, teacher tote bag, and school tote bag. And looking at these numbers, I can already see that school tote bag is going to be really hard to rank for due to the low number of searches versus the high number of competition. Teacher tote bag may be a little easier to rank for, but for now, I think I'm going to target shoppers who are looking for tote bags for bridesmaids or bachelorette gifts. And remember, since I'm not super concerned with exact matching for these terms, I can just add for bridesmaid or bachelorette party into my title because I already have the word tote bag in my title and Etsy will be able to to broad match them together in every combination. So adding this term into my title, it now reads purple floral strawberry tote bag with cute fruit pattern for bridesmaid or bachelorette party. Now that we've created our title, we next want to head down to our tags section and begin filling these out. Tags are an area that Etsy will also exact match as well as broad match. So we'll do our best to keep some of our keywords together when possible. So our goal is to keep our superstar keywords together and to avoid one word tags. We want to get as many keywords into our tags as possible. And since this is a question that I get a lot, yes, we want to make sure that we're adding all of the words from our title into our tags as well. If one of your tags doesn't fit, just break it apart wherever makes the most sense, okay? So we'll add the tags, strawberry tote bag, purple floral, cute fruit pattern, bridesmaid bag, and bachelorette party. Now that we've used all of the words from our title, we still have some room to experiment with. 
This is a great opportunity to use some of the keywords from our initial search that didn't quite make the cut for our title. These terms may have been too competitive or too broad for your title, but they'll be great for our tags, okay? You can also add tags related to the recipient, such as gifts for girls. For example, I might add the tags gifts for girls, kids overnight bag, sleepover bag, strawberry purse, teacher appreciation, and best friend birthday gifts, which we'll need to break into two tags to fit our character limit, but that puts us at our goal of 13 tags. Now, I can already hear you guys now. You guys might be saying, Starlight, you just said that we don't need to repeat the word bag because Etsy will broad match it. And yes, this is true, but oftentimes you'll end up out of ideas before you hit your 13 tags, and it's better to repeat a word and try to aim for an exact match for some of the terms like sleepover bag, rather than adding a one word tag like sleepover. This is all about testing and experimenting, okay? Once you've published that listing, it's important to remember that Etsy's algorithm can take 60 to 90 days to build a quality score for your listing. Every time that you add a new listing, Etsy begins collecting data based on how shoppers interact with it. And after a few weeks, Etsy is able to decide where in search that listing should be placed. With this in mind, it's important not to continuously edit this listing. We want to make sure that we aren't interrupting Etsy as they assess your listing quality, so be sure to give your listings plenty of time to grow. Now, I know you guys are itching for our big giveaway. I hope that I hope she's yelling at me right now. I hope that I, I planned that well. That was my, my intention. <laughs> but there's one more thing that I want to show you guys before we start our Q&A, and it's probably one of the most valuable things that E-Rank has to offer. Not to mention, Martin asked me to talk about it, so I think that it's really important <laughs> that we show it to you guys, okay? In our monthly trends tool over at E-Rank, you can choose any product category like weddings, shirts, mugs, hoodies, phone cases, etc. And from these categories, we'll show you the top 100 trending items on Etsy for that type of product. We'll also display a trend graph that will help you to determine what season this product is the most popular. That way you can list similar items right before they're expected to trend. Here, I'll give you guys a freebie that you can use right now. Like you can put it in your shop today, okay? We can see that teacher shirts was the third most searched type of shirt on Etsy last month. And we can see that teacher shirts were extremely popular in July of last year, which means that if you wanna take advantage of this trend, you need to get your teacher themed shirts listed like right now, okay? So anybody who wants to make some teacher shirts, get those listed. Okay. Now, obviously, we're about to do a huge giveaway. But with as much as we talked about e rank today, I don't want any of you to walk away empty handed. I'm going to be Oprah today. All right. Free stuff for everyone. So included with today's webinar, I'm going to be giving you all a massive free resource package. It includes my Etsy SE Oodles mini course, 30 free days of e rank Pro, my 30 day Instagram marketing kit, my 2023 Etsy marketer or marketing calendars PDF and my five-star customer service strategy that will help you to rank higher in Etsy search. So to get all of this stuff, just head over to starlaiscool.com. I, I love that domain name. I'm so happy that I was able to snag that. <laughs> and I'll deliver all of these goodies right to your inbox. But for now, let's hand things back over to Martin so we can get our Q&A and giveaway rolling. I'm excited to see what questions they have for me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Starla. I love all these, uh, these sort of demystifying of the Etsy algorithm and sort of all those tips that make it work for you. I think that's super valuable for our people out there. And just yes. in case you are watching this on replay, don't worry. Just go to the description. All these links will be available there for you as well. And be sure to subscribe since you are here on our YouTube channel. Okay, but... We need to give away another prize pack, excuse me, another uh, coupon code. Shout out to Justine Compton, who won the uh, first uh, $50, uh, hopefully. Um, hey, Justine, you have another chance to win another $50, $50 if, you, if you type fast enough, okay? So go ahead, pull out your Printify account, little green button, go down to where it says payments, scroll down to where it says coupons, and get ready to put in today's second and final coupon code. Here it is. 
Printify on YouTube, all one word. We don't want to make it too easy for you, but uh, I mentioned it previously. Be sure, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all kinds of super cool videos delivered right into your mailbox. All right, there it is. Uh, just a quick reminder to join me for my uh, live Q&A sessions on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, I've been using my E-Rank account as well to do uh, keyword, tutorial, keyword research tutorials, shop audits, whatever you guys want to talk about. All you got to do is join me and we'd be happy to see where the conversation goes. Okay? Wonderful. We're going to put that link into chat as it is right now. Sign up today. Book your spot because seats are limited. Moving along to our, our promised live Q&A. Okay, so we've got some questions. Excuse me, you've got some questions. We've got answers, okay? Our first question today comes from... Uh, great. Uh, comes from Melissa Murray. Melissa asks, uh, should the first part of the title not describe the items exactly, then add the good keywords, or does that not matter? Yeah, that's that's a great question and one that we hear all the time. Um, so there is a common misconception that the front of your Etsy title holds more weight in search. This is not true. Etsy tells us to put our most important keywords at the front of our title, not for the algorithm, but because there's a tiny little snippet that we can see on an Etsy search page that should describe what the item is because that's all the customer or the shopper is going to see is that tiny little bit of text. And those first few characters should accurately describe what the product is. That way the customer while on on a search page is able to understand that if you're selling, for example, a POD mug, maybe, you know, maybe that person doesn't understand that that's a mug. Maybe they think that it's a SVG for a mug. You want to make sure that you're putting those keywords that describe exactly what the item is at the front of your title for the sake of the shopper. But in terms of the algorithm, all keywords in your title are weighed equally. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for your question, Melissa, and thank you for joining us today. Our next question comes from Andrea Chauvin, or Chauvin. My apologies already for butchering your last name, <laughs> but thank you for joining, Andrea. I appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, there is much, there's so much contradicting information regarding titles. Does it actually have to look like a title, or packing it up with as many terms, uh, keywords, is that okay? Yeah, so... Um Etsy's best practices tell us that short, descriptive sentences are what shoppers prefer. However, the algorithm does not care if you create short, descriptive sentences or if you keyword stuff those titles, because as we talked about during the webinar, Etsy's algorithm is going to read all of the terms in your title in every possible combination. So what we advise sellers to do is test both. Both work. The algorithm likes both, but it's going to be your particular target audience and your shoppers who are going to basically determine what is going to work for you. Some industries might look at that big, long title and say, oh, that looks spammy. I don't want anything to do with that. Some people are so conditioned to seeing those big, long titles from shopping on places like eBay and Amazon that it's not even going to phase them. So experiment with both because both work, but only one is going to work for you. And sometimes you have to test both to decide which one you want to use for your own shop. Excellent. Thank you, Andrea. Um, uh, the next question comes from Third Day Soaps Garden Wellness. Okay. Um, how often do we change and look for keywords? I'm confused as to when and how often to look for keywords that are profitable. Yeah. So um, never change the tags and titles of a listing that is selling a well. That is my golden rule of Etsy SEO. Never, ever, ever change the tags and titles of listings that are selling well. Um, because if you were to move a phrase that, you know, maybe you didn't, you weren't exact matching for it, but you were broad matching with a weird combination of terms and you were gaining momentum, you can cut that traffic off and watch that listing fall in rank and lose all of the traction and sales that you were getting for that listing. How often should you change your, your SEO? I mean, really, that's up to you. If, if you're not seeing any traffic at all for some listings you've had, you know, up in your shop for a while, it's totally fine to start tweaking things. But we typically recommend to let them sit for 60 to 90 days. That way you have some time to really observe what is taking place with those listings and really observe how your keywords are impacting those listings. Um, and really, Really, you know, that amount of time is necessary to observe how shoppers are discovering those listings in search and whether or not those keywords are actually helping you. So about, you know, the time frame that your renewal is four months, I believe, is your Etsy renewal period. If your listings hit that renewal period and haven't sold, it's probably safe to start adding some different keywords. 
Okay, so third day soaps, garden, wellness. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Next one comes from Daphne Lee. Thank you so much for joining us today, Daphne. Daphne asks, where does E-Rank get their search data? Is it from Etsy directly? No, um, no SEO services get their search data directly from Etsy. We get our data from a trusted third party. And one of the things that I love about E-Rank is that we are the biggest SEO service for Etsy. We have the most users, which means that we can afford a lot of data, like millions and millions and millions of panelists. We're also one of the only Etsy uh, SEO tools that are actually recommended by Etsy. If you go into your integration section on your dashboard, we are one of the top ones that Etsy recommends. Um, so what we often kind of compare to is when you think about TV ratings, for example, right? Everybody remembers like Nelson families and, and how, you know, we get ratings for different TV shows. Basically what we do at E-Rank is very, very similar. We have millions of panelists who have been ethic or ethically sourced, you know, opted in to have their data looked at, their shopper habits looked at. And from that data, we are able to get a very, very close representation of what the average shopper is looking for. And you can see this when you start looking through some of the data, some of the numbers, especially, you know, in those search volumes, you'll be able to really recognize how vast that data set truly is. And we refresh it every 30 days. So it is always up to date. Okay, good. Well, there you go. Um, Sean Newton has our next question. Thank you so much for joining, Sean. Uh, if I sell sweatshirts and t-shirts, is it bad to have them in the same listing for the algorithm? If not, is it okay to put both in the title or should you stick with it? Um, I think it just depends. If your shop is going to have 600 really confusing listings and it's going to take shoppers forever to discover what it is that they actually want to buy, that's probably pretty inconvenient. If you're offering, you know, a red shirt, a white shirt, a blue shirt, a green shirt, and those are all listed separately, probably better to have those variants all listed together. Um, I think that the main thing to remember when listing everything together is that whatever your lowest price product is in that variant group, that is what Etsy is going to display. And it's really sketchy if you're selling one little baby t-shirt next to you know, a $50 hoodie and they're seeing that $50 hoodie in the thumbnail, but they're seeing the baby t-shirt prices. So you should always keep those things in mind because we don't want our shoppers to feel like they're being victims of bait and switch. Um, so is there any benefit to the algorithm? Not really. Uh, it just depends on how many listings you have, how clean you want your shop to look and, and ultimately how you want everything laid out. But with the algorithm, there's no advantage or disadvantage. There you go, Sean, there's your answer. Wonderful, moving along, Marion has our next question. Thank you, Marion. When uploading new products today, does it make sense to already include keywords related to Christmas, uh, Christmas gifts? If no, when would you recommend to include them? And I'm so glad you asked this question. Yeah, so you guys can actually start looking at this data right now over at E-Rank. We typically see the very first searches for Christmas taking place in July. July and August are when we really start to see people ramping up for Christmas. I don't know who these people are or why they're so motivated. I'm not one of those people. But there are people out there who are already interested in buying Christmas products. Now, if we consider the time that it takes for your listings to gain traction in search and to build up their listing quality score, it would be ideal to list your product at least four months before the intended season. Now, people aren't buying Christmas products on Christmas. They're buying them usually around November. So four months ahead of November, that would put you listing those products pretty soon, right? I'm already seeing big spikes for Halloween products on Etsy as well. So for everybody who's holding off on launching Hall Halloween products, get those things listed because right now people are searching for them. Exactly, Marion. Thank you so much for this question. When I would work with our top sellers here at Printify, I would start having the Christmas holiday conversation right now in June. And I, they, they would ask me, well, why should I even worry about it? It's, it's so far away. But, but you can never plan too much for the busiest time and the best time to be a print-on-demand seller, which is the holidays, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. That is what you want to gear towards because you'll, you will make, if you, if, if you target, if you plan successfully, you will make the bulk of your sales just in that short little window. So don't sell it short. Thank you for your question, Marion. Okay. Our next question comes from MT Graphics by Madison. Thank you very much. Uh, she says, um, should you use all the characters in your title? 
<laughs> this is a myth. I just did a huge video about this on Tuesday on my channel. Somebody, I know somebody in the world is telling everybody that there's a magical character counting robot that is giving out magical search ranking awards for hitting the 140 character limit. That's a myth. Etsy tells us to keep our titles short and descriptive. And as I said previously, the algorithm doesn't care either way. It's going to read all of your keywords, but there is no benefit to filling the entire title space. I don't even know where this myth has come from. Yeah, it's important to cast a nice wide net or net by using a good variety of keywords. But when you think about how those keywords are going to be broad matched in every possible combination, you're probably already ranking for hundreds of different terms without even realizing it. So filling out all 140 characters, it's it's not necessary. And it's really hard. That sounds like a big waste of time to me. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> D dispelling Etsy myths. I love it. Okay, uh, Texas gals. Oh, uh, th this this is uh, already covered in, in, in today's discussion. But is it going to hurt if we change the title in an active listing? In a, at a listing that is in selling a, or don't touch it if it's already selling. Yes. Don't don't fix what isn't broken. But if the listing, if by active you mean it's published in your shop and you just want to tweak it, that's totally fine. As long as it's one of your listings that isn't doing very well, then yeah, you can't you can't hurt what is already not working. So go ahead and tweak it. There you go. Take that uh, take that advice to the bank. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Lynette uh, Lynette Gerlach asks. How much ahead of holiday do you remember starting to post products that are related to that holiday? Again, here's, a, here's a, a, another holiday-related question. But do you have uh, an, an, a, an, an exact date that, that you can share? <laughs> Four months, four months minimum. If if you can do it a little bit ahead of, or ahead of that, it's not going to hurt you. But four months is the standard. Right when you see craft stores start putting out things related to that holiday, that's when you should get those items in your shop. Always look at the craft stores. Exactly. And stay tuned for all kinds of fun tips and tricks from Printify as we move closer to the holiday season. Okay. Ooh. Wonderful. AJ Putnam asks, uh, I know we are supposed to leave SEO alone for 60 to 90 days, but if I have one word tags that need updating, is it okay to do an update and then wait? I mean, if that listing isn't selling, like I said, you can't really hurt something that is already not working for you. So that's totally fine if you want to update them. I just don't recommend touching anything that's already doing well because it's almost like you don't want to jinx it, right? We don't know what the algorithm is going to do. There are mysterious parts of the algorithm that Etsy keeps private because they want to make ranking on Etsy equal for everybody. And if somebody were to figure it out, they could game the system and take advantage of it and, and leave everybody else in the dust, right? So the algorithm is always evolving. And sometimes we just want to leave things alone that are working for us because the Etsy gods might decide that they're just going to cut off tra or traffic to that listing altogether, which we do see happen a lot. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, the next question comes from Stingray Designs. Thank you, Stingray, for, for participating today. Does changing an item's category affect the ranking of it? Um, well, attributes and categories do uh, have an impact on Etsy search. Title, tags, attributes, descriptions, in that order. Um, so I cannot tell you how much it's going to impact, but that product that you have listed or that category that you have chosen needs to be accurate to the type of product that you're selling. So even if that listing is performing well, if the category needs to be changed, because it's going to be like a detriment to the customer experience or what that customer is going to be receiving, it is more important to go ahead and make that switch than have it in the wrong category. Okay. All right. Uh, two more questions, and then we'll right. we'll wrap up today's presentation. Today's uh, this question comes from MSPM two thousand four. They ask, how would you research keywords differently if you're targeting a particular niche? Ooh, that's that's. Very, very interesting. So um, I'm assuming if you're if you're specializing in a very specific niche, rather than trying to create a little bit of everything, which I'm not a fan of, because for one, Etsy's algorithm is going to give you a little bit more like street credit if they can identify that there is an overarching theme. If all you make is like items for dog lovers and your whole shop is items for dog lovers and then somebody comes to etsy to shop for items for dog lovers the algorithm is more likely to say oh you know betty over here specializes in items for dog lovers and sue is looking for items for dog lovers 
we need to make a match here. We need to we need to play matchmaker and put these two together because that is more likely to result in a sale. So that's why I'm a big fan of niching rather than selling a lot of everything. But in terms of how to really, you know, optimize your your research process, start thinking like your customers. Don't just think about what your item is. If you're selling a dog, you know, mug with a golden retriever on it, don't just try to think of a thousand ways to say mug with a golden retriever on it. Think more about the type of customer who's buying a mug with a golden retriever, maybe vet techs uh, or, or veterinarians or, you know, vet schools or groomers or, you know, dog show people. There are so many niches that fit into the overarching theme of, you know, your mug with a golden retriever on it. So really start to get into the mind of your target customer. And don't be afraid to ask for feedback from others in the Etsy community. You know, say, hey, you know, I've got this golden retriever mug. Who would you buy this for? What type of person would you buy this for? And sometimes having a lot of people give feedback is the best way to get new ideas. Okay, wonderful. Well, we have one more question, and then we'll right. let you go for today, Starla. Thank you so much. Uh, we got to do that giveaway, that last right. giveaway. Uh, the, uh, the last question comes from AEL Films. Okay, you said description is not too relevant for SEO. Should we describe each product different, or, it, uh, or may it be a generic, like, features of a T-shirt? Um, well, I think that that really depends. So Etsy told us during their recent Etsy Up Live event that they do not use descriptions for query matching, which is something that we've kind of known over at E-Rank based on some experiments that we've run. Um, we, we could tell that they weren't query matching. But basically, the way that they described it is that they're using their descriptions to gain additional context about the item. If, for example, you are doing a, I don't know, a cotton t-shirt and no Nowhere else in your listing do you have the terms cotton, but somebody is specifically searching for something cotton. And the only place in your listing in your is in your description and the word cotton is in there. Etsy might, I'm just speculating, Etsy might utilize the term cotton from that description in order to say, oh, this person specifically wants cotton. Um, so basically what we don't want to see is you taking your whole title and trying to shove all of those keywords down in your description. I've seen a lot of people, they'll just copy their title and paste it at the top of their description. Don't do that, it looks really gross. Um, don't shove a bunch of keywords unnaturally into your descriptions in order to you know, try to rank and search. That's not necessary. Just describe your item as accurately as you can. And if, like you said, you're only selling shirts and your descriptions are pretty generic because all of your products are essentially made of the same thing, that should be totally fine. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you to everybody who submitted a question today. Hope you learned something. Hope you learned something from today's uh, webinar. Go back and check out Starless other appearances on our YouTube channel in the live section. Uh, and while you're there, browse through uh, some of the other topics and uh, presenters that that we have uh, that we have uh, presented to make you a more profitable and more knowledgeable sell seller. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Okay, but we promised a giveaway. So this, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everyone to, uh, we're going to put a link to our survey into the, uh, in, in, into the chat, answer today's trivia question. Let us know how we did today. Oh, Martin, you're great. Starla was awesome. Uh, and, uh, let us know what you want to hear, hear from us in the future. We always love to hear your feedback. Three lucky winners who answer today's trivia question correctly will win today's prize package of a Printify webinars hoodie, just like the one Starla is wearing right there, a personalized Printify mug and $50 worth of Printify sales credit. And in addition, one lucky person will be selected from all survey, uh, survey uh, respondents to win the full, full ride scholarship to the Handmade Alpha Academy. But don't worry, even if you don't win, you can still attend. We're going to put that information also in, into the chat and into the description so you can join Starla and learn all you need to know to be a profitable and uh, uh, profitable print-on-demand merchant with, with Etsy and build your empire. Starla, thank you so much for joining us today. This was absolutely awesome. This was your third appearance. I hope this is yes. just 
just uh, one in, in uh, uh, just your latest, and we can plan on you joining us in the future. Um, check out Starla's YouTube channel, all her social media. That's all going to be in the description. Join me for my live Q&As. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to take a few weeks off, but stay tuned for more webinars from Printify. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.